God bless you, you and Apostle, you, you and especially you, the Apostle Barry Stakes. Just want to take the time uh, this morning to release this pre-recorded message, Wait on God, uh, coming out of the book of Psalms 27. Uh, there are times in our lives that we need to just trust and wait on God. And this is the word the Lord had given me, a pre-recorded message, and I wanted to release this word to you. So before I release it, let us pray. Now, Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We bless we magnify, edify, glorify, and exalt you for all that you've done. Even in the midst of this pandemic that's going on, we praise you that you're covering us and protecting us in the blood of Jesus, that your mercies endure forever and ever, and that your grace surrounds us. We thank you that you're in the winds and that you know all and that you're in control of all. Now, we repent of all sin, all iniquity, all ungodliness. Father, of everything we've said, done, thought, or imagined that would keep you from getting the glory we repent even now, but we release the anointing, and we ask you to anoint this word over the hearts and the minds of those that will be listening to this word, and begin to point into their spirits, Father, that you may be glorified, magnified, and exalted, accelerate your kingdom through your word, and we bind the enemy, and every type of the enemy that will come against this word even now, we release a fresh anointing as you activate it in the hearts and the minds of every believer in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and I pray that this word bless you as we enter into a pre-recorded message of wait on the Lord uh, David was praying this is a prayer David was praying to the Lord and this is one of the songs he began to pray uh, in Psalm 27 I want to start at verse number 4 if you haven't say amen that says one thing I desire of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in the provision, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall sit me upon the rock. Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. And thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thou face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face from, far from me. Put not thou servant away in what? Anger. Thou haste, thou hast been for which in my help. And leave me not, and neither for what? Seek me, O God of my what? Salvation. And when my father and my mother forsook me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy ways, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of who? my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witnesses are what? Risen up against me. And such as bring about cruelty. And I had fainted unless I had leave to see the goodness of the Lord in the what? Land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of what? Good courage. And he what? Shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You may be seated. David was praying unto the Lord, and David was going through some things in his life, trials and tribulations and things sometimes, in many cases, he didn't understand himself. In the midst of what he was going through, he had to delight himself in the Lord. He had to wait on the Lord in his trials and in his tribulations, in his discouragements and in his disappointments. He had to wait on God. The word wait means to be still. It means to be motionless. It means not to move. Now, there's, many, there, there's two types of weight. There's the weight that you wear, but I'm talking about the weight where you be still and you wait on the Lord. In other words, sometimes we want to move ahead of God. Now, many of I was praying, and the Lord came to me and was saying, there's some that are trying to move ahead of me, and they're trying to get out of my will. And he said, remind them that their blessing is in my will. Remind them that their promise is in my will. Remind them to be still and to wait on me, says the Spirit of the Lord. Sometimes the enemy will come and he will try to speak things in our heart and speak things in our spirit that's not in line with the will of God. But we have to be patient and we have to be still and we have to wait on God. The reason for the waiting is because waiting is a process. 
Waiting is when God begins to pour things in our spirit to shift us and to prepare us, not only that, but to qualify us for the next move and the next stages in the Father. One of the things the enemy don't want you to be is qualified. He don't want you to be prepared. When we wait, that's a period of preparation. Uh, and, and, you know, I said before and I said again, there are times we have dreams and we see ourselves in the kitchen. And we're doing things in the kitchen. And what we fail to realize is the kitchen is a place where we what? We prepare things. We prepare meals. We prepare, we prepare uh, dinners and things of that nature. We, we get things ready. We, we dress up things. We, we do all types of things in the kitchen. So when you're in that place, you're, you're getting ready. Uh, in other words, God says, I'm imparting in you. And so passage of Scripture in Ecclesiastes, it talks about, um, I'm trying to remember exactly which book I want. It talks about times, and it talks about seasons, and it talks about times for this and times for that. But even in Ecclesiastes, there's a season where we have to be still. There's a season where we have to wait. Now, I want to shift on you for just a moment. Because in, in, in this particular prayer that David was praying, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Look at verse number one. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I what? Fear. David knew in this particular passage of scripture that he could depend on God. You notice that's a capital L, capital O, capital R, and a capital D. The Lord is my strength. Anytime you see words in capital, that means they're what? They're hollering at you. They're screaming at you. So David says, the Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Then he said it again. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I, what, be afraid? Now he's encouraging himself. And he's reminding, sometimes you go through things in your life where you got what? You got to strengthen yourself. You got, and, and in other words, even though David cried out to the Lord, he was reminding himself, I, I know who I am. And not only do I know who I am, but I know whose I am. And sometimes we tend to forget whose we are because we start listening to everybody outside of the circle of God. And when we start listening to people outside of the circle of God, that's when we get in trouble with God. And sometimes the Lord will send you a test to see if you will stand firm in spite of all that's going on. Whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you're miserable, miserable, it doesn't matter. God takes us and tests us to see if we will remain faithful. What is faithful? Faithful simply means to be persistent. It simply means to be continuous to strive toward the things of God. In other words, not being shifted or not being changed or not being convinced to go overt to what God is already or God is calling our life to, but allow ourselves to accelerate in his kingdom and to accelerate not only in his kingdom, but to accelerate in him. Now, now David encouraged himself. He wrote the first of all, he said, the Lord is a, he said, the Lord is a, the Lord is my light. So in other words, he said, if I need to put my eyes on anything, I need to keep my eyes on the light. Uh oh. Many times we need to look at but we take our eyes off the light. We take our eyes off, off, off the daylight. In other words, God is the light. And not only that, but he says, the Lord is my strength. So he says, my light is my strength. Notice what David does there. He says, God is my light and God is my strength. That's all I need. Then he goes to the next verse and he says, whom shall I be afraid? In other words, he says, God is everything I will ever need, so I have no reason to fear right now. But there'll be times you'll be going through things in your life, you say, Lord, how in the world am I going to make it? God says, what did you say? You don't know who you are. You don't realize that you're an ambassador for Christ. That you will even ask me certain things. When I take care of the grass outside and make sure it's closed every season, when the, when the, when the, when the spring hits the grass, turn green. Why? Because it's time for it to wake up. I have put it to bed and it has slept all winter, and now it is time to wake up. There are times when we go through things in our lives where we have to be woke up by God. We have to be reminded ourselves to be strengthened by God to be reminded that God, he said, I'll never leave you. No will I what? Ever forsake you. And, and, and you have to think about this. Now, Abraham went through a, a trial in his life where the Lord made him a promise. But when God spoke to Abraham and made Abraham a promise, the word teaches us that God didn't speak to Abraham for 13 years. That's how quiet God was. He was busy with other things. He'd already told Abraham what he was going to do, and then he put him in a place of what? Preparation. Sometimes when God makes you a promise, he'll put you in a place of preparation, and he'll keep you there, and you won't say nothing. And you're like, well, where is the Lord? Does God hear my cry? Is God still living? Is he still real in my life today? Is, is, is he still moving? Is he going to do what he said he would do? God says, I, I, I'm still here. Oh, my God, I'm going to God says, I'm, God says, what? I'm still here. He says, I'm still what? I'm 
I'm still moving, but I'm, I'm see, see, when anytime the Lord gives you a word, he always go ahead of you to make the crooked places straight. But now he's with you at the same time, although you can't see him, although you can't hear him, you're praying this like a hollow, and you say, well, where's the Lord? I don't feel his presence like I once felt him. But God says, no, 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 I'm strengthening you right now. And David says, the Lord is my what? He's my strength. And see, and the next verse is, and when the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes, those are the foes that don't care nothing about me, came up against me to eat up my flesh, God says what? David said, they stumbled and they fell. David says, now, because guess what? Even though I don't, I can't see him, he's what? He's right there. Amen. See, when God, when God put the hand around Job, he protected Job, he protected his whole family. And even when the enemy rose up, because see, the only way Job could, the devil could touch Job, he had to have God's permission. So that means he had to raise up. And now catch God. Watch God in this now. So God speaks and he says, now, as Satan is going through heaven, you know, have you ever seen people walking back and forth? Hmm. Which one was messing with me? There's got to be somebody out there that's faithful to God. And then the Lord says, have you considered my servant Job? how faithful he is. Now, notice what God does. God plants a seed in Satan's mind or in his spirit, and then he goes after Job. He says, have you considered? In other words, I know you tried to see who to mess with next, but let me give you one that I know is going to stand in spite of. But see, you, you got to be that kind of person that in spite of what you go through, you got to remain faithful. A lot of people see, see you going through things and they say, I just, I just couldn't serve God after watching go through all that. Why not? Who else would you serve? Remember when Jesus, Jesus was talking to them and, and, and uh, they, they was out there and in the process Jesus says, okay, if you're going to follow me, you got to eat my blood and drink my flesh. That's what Jesus told them. <laughs> and when he said, eat my blood and drink my flesh, the Bible says they turned from Jesus and never followed him again. And then Jesus said, well, the apostles was with Jesus. And he said, are y'all going to leave me too? And he said, they said, well, where are we going to go? Who are we going to? In, in other words, Jesus stepped in a mess that they didn't understand. In other words, he released what was going to happen down the road in the present, but they rejected it. So they thought he was talking like a vampire. And he just blooded. What? Well, he must be crazy. He didn't blood and drink his blood. They never knew we were going to be doing that from generation to generation. Now, Look at the next verse. He says, now, when they in, in the next verse, he says, now, they stumbled and fell. Now, let's go to number three. It says, though a host, that's a whole lot of people, they camp against me. In other words, you, 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 you be around and a whole bunch of folk rise up against you because they don't understand who you are. It says, my heart should not what? Fear. In other words, that's not, that's not that word respect there. That word fear right there means uh, uh, to be afraid. So it says, now, I'm not worried about what they're going to do to my flesh, but my spirit will remain what? Faithful. It will remain bold. Why? Because my spirit, my heart, in other words, who I am spiritually, I've got to remain faithful. So it says, my, my heart will not fear. Then it says, though, uh, though war shall rise against me, in this will I be what? Confident. Now, and David says, now, the Lord is my, is my light and my salvation. So in this, even though wars are rising against me, I know the Lord is my light and my salvation, so to say. So in that, I'm still going to be what? Confident. And it doesn't matter what I'm experiencing. doesn't matter who rises up against me. The Lord is my light and my strength. So even though they rise against me, I'm still going to be confident. In other words, I have assurance that all day and I do anything that God can do better. In other words, I'm, I, I, I'm firm in my belief, in my relationship, in my walk with Christ. And see, David was encouraging himself. He said, in this, I'm going to be confident. So come on with your honor. Remember Gideon. Gideon had, what, 30,000? And God told him, you got too many. He said, Gideon was ready to fight the battle. God said, I don't need 30,000. He got it down to 3,000. God said, you still got, what, too many. He got it down to 300. God said, that's, I, that's a number I can work with. In other words, I don't want them to be able to say that I had a whole lot in the battle. I want them to be able to say, that they whooped us with no eyes. <laughs> in other words, I want them to say, God, in, in other words, when they looked out, they saw an army because there was one nobody but 300 men. Because see, God, and see, 
see what God did? He gave Gideon a strategy. And see, one of the things I have to realize, when God has a plan, he'll give you a strategy, and it'll look like you got a whole lot of gold working in front of you, and God is doing all the work. And all you're doing is what? Remaining faithful. See, 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 God blesses us because we say it is what? It is pleasing. So he said, well, I don't understand how they're making it. Well, they're not making it. God is making it for them. See, the way is already made. Well, no, it's not. But yes, it is. Because you say, I go ahead of you, and I make every place straight. So by the time you get there, it's already done. You ain't got to do nothing for what? Praise God. Remember? You remember Jehoshaphat? Jehoshaphat? The guy out there, dog, told Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, you're going to fight the battle. And Jehoshaphat did it. The prophet, the prophet of him, and the man of God came and released the word of the Lord to Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat had to be still. Although he wanted to go to battle, he needed, he needed to wait on God. And the Lord told him, he said, you go tell Jehoshaphat, all I need for him to do is to put the, the saints, to put the Israel on the fast. I need them to pray, and I need them to fast. Now come speak to Jehoshaphat and tell him what I want him to do later. The word is early in the morning. The Lord spoke to Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat got up, and the Lord spoke, and he said, believe the Lord thou God. Guess what? So she what? So she you be established. Jehoshaphat, he obeyed the voice of God. Believe his prophet. And so shall you prophet. Go back and read it. It's in there. But it said, by the time they got to the camp, they had had an uproar. And they followed one another all night long. And they had killed each other. And when Jehoshaphat and God, they all had to do was just collect the spoils. The word says, all they had to do was get the riches. The money belongs to God. Y'all say, all I want you to do is go get my stuff. Yes, it is. I, I don't need you to dirty your hands. I'm going to let them kill one another. I don't want you to just go get my stuff. And the word says it took three days for them to gather all the gold, the jewelry, the silver, the diamonds. It took three days for them to bring all God's stuff back. Why? Because God had already given Jehoshaphat a plan. He said, all I need you to do is fast and pray. I'll be ready. In other words, I, Zeke David says, the Lord is my strength and my salvation. And one passage of scripture. But in this particular passage of scripture, David speaks and he says, The Lord is my life and my what? Salvation. So he says, I got to keep my eyes on my deliverance. See, that word salvation means deliverer. It means I'm going to be delivered. So, in other words, when I'm in a situation where I need to be free, God can bring me out of that situation. Why? Because He is my salvation. In other words, He's going to set me free even when I'm incarcerated in my spirit, when I'm incarcerated in my mind, when I'm battling within myself. God still going to what? He's still going to deliver me. He's still going to what? He's still going to set me free. Why? Because my faith and my confidence is totally in Him. It's not about what Mama said, it ain't about what Daddy said, because God already spoke. He already told me years ago what he's going to do today. It might not be, see, see, this is what I'm going to make a mistake here, because it don't look like what they think it ought to look like. Now, catch me now. Or it don't look like what somebody else think it ought to look like. They get deceived. Let me tell you something. If it, if, 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 if it looked like what you thought it would look like, then God wouldn't have to do it, because you'd already know what, it's going, what the end result's going to be. But see, God knows our beginning, and God knows our end. What we don't know is what tomorrow's going to bring us. If we know what tomorrow's going to bring us, I've said so many times, we wouldn't even get out of the bed and say, well, Lord, I'm going to sleep today because I know what's going to happen. So if I stay at home, guess what? There's no possibility that it can take place. For God says, go out there anyway because guess what? I got you covered. Remember what he told Gilgit? He said, take them down to the river and let them drink water. And he said, oh, the lap like a dog. Now, this is the strategy. He said, I need you to have two warriors. God says, if they, if they just, just get down in that water, just drink that water like they don't care about getting attacked or anything, I don't want them fighting for me. <laughs> he said, they're not fit for the battle. I need men that will lap like a dog and will look to their left and look to their right. And everybody, the, the first thing he said, if you don't want to fight, do what? Go home. That was the first release. And all of them left for 3,000. And God told him he still got them men. He said, take them to the river, let them like, like let drink some water. And watch them. You miss what happens to you. You, 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 you go home. You go home. Well, what I want like, no, you go home. I don't need you. Because see, you, you, you don't have your brother's back. You're not your brother's keeper. That's what that's what uh, that's what God asked uh, uh, Abel. Now, and he asked Cain, where's that brother 
hate on you. Say, am I my brother too? In other words, they say, who am I? Am I my brother? He already knew he had killed his brother. He already knew he had taken his life. Look at the next verse. It says, one thing I have desired, 20, uh, 27 and 4. One thing I desire, the Lord, that I will what? Seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. David said, all I want to do is just look at the beauty. To behold the beauty of the Lord. <laughs> I want to see the Lord myself. That's what David said. He said he didn't say he said he didn't say I wanted to he didn't say I wanted to see the temple. He said I had some questions. That word inquiry means to find out some things. But he said I just want to look at God. I want to see Him for myself. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. In other words, I got to get in His presence so I can find out what's really going on. I, I want to meet the angelic host so they can tell me the story about how they praise God all day long. <laughs> David, David said. I, I know who I am, so I just want to be positioned so I can receive information, but I want to see God for myself. Now, notice what he says in number six. He says, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. Now, see, there are times in your life where you go through things, you encourage yourself, and then you can take you on the healing walk with him. Now, you and Thorne, a lot of folks say you, you go to people, but you really think you walk with your head down that way. I, I, I went to Lowe's the other day, and I was walking my head like this, and I was walking down, but I was in a big store house. Lift your head up. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 They're watching you. They're watching you. And see, I had no idea about mine was on what I was getting ready to do when I was looking. When I was walking down. But see, let me tell you something. When God has something for you, he will elevate you. He will lift you up. And a lot of folks say, oh, they're going down. No, 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 no. No. When God has something for you, he'll lift you up. He'll position you. He'll get you ready. And you be, you be behind the cliff getting ready. Folks say, I ain't seen so and so in ten years, and all of a sudden so and so pop up out of nowhere, and they say, "My God, look at the anointing, the power of God on their life." Where have you been all this time? I've been in preparation. I've been in process. I've been being what prepared. I've been being getting ready for what for for the for the true believers that God has in store for my life. See, God equips us and He prepares us, and then after He gets us ready, then He's sending us out. After, after He got you getting ready, guess what He did? He said, "Time goes back." Then He gave us a strategy on how to defeat the enemy. But see, and, and see, that's one of the things we got to wait on God. See, let me tell you something, saints. When you move ahead of God, you don't have a strategy. You don't have a plan, and you've stepped out of protection. And that's what a lot of people don't see. They don't understand that when you move ahead of God, you step out of the place of protection. In other words, you come out from under the covering of the man or the woman of God that is responsible for your soul. And when you do that, God can't really bless you. He can't move no more because guess what? You stepped out from under the umbrella of covering. And when you step back, that's what God says. He says, okay, well, they got to come back. I just preached the other way last week. You got to come back where you were, where you left God. Because that's where he's going to be waiting on you at. If you think you, if you think you go 20 miles up the road and God's going to be there when you get there, you are sadly mistaken. You might as well go back 20 and then go back to 10 you left. Because that's where he's going to be at, about 30 miles behind you. Even. And you're going to know when you find him because guess what? You're going to go there in your spirit. You could be in, you could be in Spain somewhere you're still going back in your spirit. Because you got to go back where you left him at. Amen? He takes you back to the last stage. Remember when? Look at, look at this, uh, David says in 27, let me see. Yeah, and it's simple. He says, for the time of trouble, he shall what? Hide me in his provision. In the secret of what? His tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall what? Set me upon a rock. So David says, now in my time of trouble, God's going to hide me himself. So even when I'm in trouble, you ain't going to know it. Because guess what? When you're in trouble, you ain't got to spread it on the news. You ever seen a piece of paper that have a newspaper? And they hold that piece of paper up. When they even sit, sit back and find one. Now, it, it's, it's the top story. So what they do, they hold it up like this right here. Read all about it. Da, 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 da. Read all about it. Da, 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 da. Guess what? They're what? They're broadcasting everything that's going on. Uh-uh. No, you can't.
can't do that with God. You got to go through. You got to keep it to yourself. And somebody saying about just couldn't use it too much. They had to tell somebody else with God you can't do that. Because guess what? You got to go through it till you pass the test. So if you keep telling it, you got to keep going through it. I say, well, you told that one, so let me put you in another fight. So we take out of that one, put you one more test. Says, okay, Lord, I got to trust you through this battle. Because guess what? That's what God wants us to do. That's why I said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and not to thy own understanding, and all thy ways, and not him. And he said, what? Direct our path. Look at the next verse. It says, now, it says, and now shall my head be lifted up above what? My enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of what? Joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Notice what David said. He said, now that I've been through the, all this trials and tribulations, how many missed that? Hold on a second. Make sure I didn't miss one. Yeah. He says, now, I'm, God, has, God has hid me in verse number five. So now he says, now that I've gone through, look what he says in the next verse. He says, now I've been through, God has hid me upon the rock. Then he says, and now shall my head be lifted up above, above my what? Enemies. Let me tell you something. A lot of people say keep your enemies close and your friends closer. Anybody ever heard that statement? <laughs> That's a true statement. Keep your enemies close and your friends closer. Because you will find out that some of your friends is some of your biggest enemies. And see, one thing, you see, you listen, you know your enemy. And you know they don't like you. But you better watch that friend. Because that friend can do some serious damage. If you ain't paying no attention to the Holy Spirit. Now it says, and now shall my head be lifted. David says, even though I've been through some things, my head can be lifted up above my enemy. In other words, they might have walked about me, they might have talked about me, they might have said this or said that. But when I come out now, I'm coming out with power and authority. I'm flowing in what? Dunamis. I'm born in just what the power of God knocking everything in front of me down. Why? Because now I, my enemy said I, I was defeated because what God says, oh no, you ain't defeated. God says, you can't destroy me because I live for what? I live forever. So if I'm in you, guess what? The enemy can't defeat you if God is inside of you. Now you might walk around defeated. And you might walk around acting defeated. But if God is really in you, you're not defeated. So God that's in me. God that's in me, there's no failure. You say I'm in you, well, why are you failing? Well, in me it ain't no failure. It might look like you're gonna fail, but guess what? I'm gonna show up at the last second. 345.27 seconds PM. Not hello, God sent me. Man, I just got 10 minutes to pay this bill. Listen, I know that's God. And the, and the place you need to go to is five minutes from the house. <laughs> See, I, I'll call you later. Baby, I gotta go handle some stuff right quick. But that's how God does. He's the on time right now, God. When God says he will come when you need it. Until you, until he comes, guess what? You don't need it. You just say you need it. Guess what I can say? Until God shows up, you don't need it. But guess what? He's always on time. He's never late. And he will never do more than you need at the time you need it. And I know what I'm talking about. I remember years ago, my truck broke down. I had a Mitsubishi Mighty Max. And I called a friend of mine to give me a ride. And the Lord told me to give him 15 or $10 to take me to the bank. And when I went in the bank, I was standing there, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, draw out $1,015. I said, what? Do what? Draw out $1,015. That's what God told me to draw out. So I took it out, put it in my pocket. And then the Lord told me, he said, when you get in the truck, give him the $15 to take me to the bank. Give him the $1,000 of the blessing. I said, okay. And I did what God said to me. I gave him the $15 for taking me to the store because I had to pay for that. But God made me give above, $1,000 above the $15. Now, God has a sense of humor on me. He said, I want you to pay the $15 for taking you to get the truck, and I want you to give him $1,000 because I told you to. And guess what? That's exactly what I did. And guess what?
that's what God did. It was exactly what he needed before 4 p.m. that day, or they were going to foreclose on his mortgage. This is the reason it is so important to listen to the voice of God. And when I did that, I had no idea I had positioned myself to walk in a thousand dollar fold. And guess what people started doing? They started throwing thousand dollar bills in my life. Why? Because I gave in that ministry and never even realized that I had done it. But see, let me tell you something. You can never walk in a ministry you have not sown in. But when you sow in that ministry, then guess what? You go, I had to go to mailbox. God called me one time. He said, the Lord told me that we needed to tithe. That's just several years ago. We was on Burke Street. And we had got a high on the mortgage on Burke Street. And the guy called me and he said, we needed to tithe. And he said, the Lord told me to tithe in your ministry. And I had to minister to him on the phone. Sir, I said, well, okay. He said, so I want you to bless it. He said, I've already put it in the mail. $3,500 when he sent the check. And we needed 2000 to take care of the mortgage. Now see, but God did exactly what he said he was going to do on time, full of gave us a great deal on top of it. So that's, this is the reason, when, when, when you go back and you look at where God has brought you from versus where God has put you in God, there's, if God puts you there, there's no sorrow. Listen to what I'm saying. If God, if God puts you there, there, he said, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrows. If God put you there, you ain't got to worry about how you're going to make it. Because guess what? God opened that door. And when God opened the door, guess what? He will sustain you. It doesn't matter what the enemy does. It doesn't matter. I remember many years ago, my mom got a revelation. Many, many years ago, we were living in heaven and God. And my mom came to me and she said, I want you to pray for the Lord to bless us with this house. My credit is terrible. And I know if anybody can get a prayer through you, this is what my mom told me. I was 16 years old. And this is what my mom came to me. This is what my mom told me. She said, if anybody can get a prayer through you, can. And I went upstairs and I prayed and I waited on the Lord to answer. And the Lord answered me. He said, tell your mama if she wants the house, the house is hers. That means that man called my mom and said, go move in the house. Didn't check our credit or nothing. Now you tell me that ain't God. And to this day, she's still in that same house. And the devil has tried many times Take it away from him. And guess what? When God gives you something, the devil in hell can't take it away from you. But when you go get it on your own and God ain't in it, uh oh. When God ain't in it, the devil will do everything and he'll come and he'll take it. Why? Because God was never in it when you got it. But, when, but if God say do it, guess what? He's going to back you up. You ain't got to have nothing. You ain't, let me tell you something, saints. You ain't got to have no social to raise no money. You ain't got to cook no cakes. If God told you to do it, he's going to make a way out of no way. He'll speak to one person and they'll come put in your hand what you need. Why? Because God says, and guess what? He always has somebody who will obey. Don't you think for a minute he don't? You might say, I ain't God, because that's all right. I got a blessing for you. Go do so and so and so and so. She waited for me, I don't know how many years more. The Lord gave me a word, I gave it to her, she got blessed. She held the money until she found me to give it to me. Amen. To be what? Obedient. And I'm not teaching the money, but I'm just telling you what God does when we obey his voice. Amen? Amen. And, and, and David understood in this particular passage of scripture that he had, he had, a, he had his confidence totally, his reliance, confidence totally in God. Look at this, look at uh, verse number um. Number seven, it says, hear, O Lord, when I what? When I cry with my voice. And have what? Mercy on me. And what? David said, I don't just want you to hear me. I want you to have mercy, and I know you to talk to me. I need you to speak back to me. Answer me when I ask, when I talk to you. Say, you pray all day, and God don't ever say nothing. You say, Lord, I'm waiting on your answer. Look at, this, look at verse number eight. It says, and when thou sayest, seek my face, my heart saying unto thee, thou face, O Lord, will I what? See, there comes a time you got to get in the presence of God. You got to shut everything and everybody off and get in his presence. And you can't do it when there's a lot of noise around you. You got to wait on God. I was in there praying this morning. I was getting ready to get the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. 
And I'm just laid there. Boy, the Holy Spirit just took over for the whole sanctuary. Why? Because that's God. That's how he operates. That's how he moves. He moves that way because we what? We patiently wait on him. Even when others don't understand, you got to wait on him what? Anyway. You got to accelerate in him what? Anyway. Do the next verse. So you got to seek God's face. What does it say in Matthew? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added. And notice what it says in, in verse number nine. It says, hide not thou face far. Now notice David, David didn't say, David said, he didn't only say, he didn't say hide your face, but he said don't go too far. Yeah. He said, hide not thou face far from me. Don't go too far, Lord. You can hide your face, but don't hide it too far from me. He says, and put not thou servant away in anger. In other words, when I do something, I ain't got no business, don't be mad at me. Amen. And David called himself a what? He called himself God's servant. He said, and put not thou servant away in anger. And then he says, thou hast been my what? Help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, my salvation. He said, I know I'm not perfect. You always been my help. So don't leave me now. And don't forsake me. See, David, David was what? He was praying. He was crying out to the Lord. And in his prayer time and crying out, God moved on his behalf and said, Then when my father and my mother forsook me, then the Lord what? Take me up. See, you're going to have to leave mama. You're going to have to leave daddy. You're going to have to leave sister. You're going to have to leave brother. Look at verse number 20, number 14. I'm jumping down. It says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. So in your waiting, you can't be mad. In your waiting, you can't be angry at God. In your waiting, you can't be upset that God ain't moving the way you think he ought to move, how you think he ought to move as fast as you think he ought to do it. It says, be of good courage. That means, in other words, when you see somebody speak in a kind, in, in, in an in a, in a abrasive, loving way. It says, and he shall what? Strengthen your spirit. And wait, I say, on who? The Lord. Psalm 31, 24 says, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Not some of y'all, but all ye that hope in the Lord. He says, be of good courage, and he'll what? Strengthen your heart. Psalm 33, 20 says, our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. He says, our soul wait on God. He's our help. He's our shield. In other words, he's our protector. When we what? We wait patiently. And the enemy don't want you waiting. Uh, 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 Psalm 62 and 5 says, My soul waiteth. Thou o my soul wait, thou o only upon the Lord. My soul wait only upon the Lord, upon God. For my expectation is for what? So oh, you expect him to move? David said, My soul waited patiently for the Lord because my expectation is from him. In other words, if you're expecting it from anybody else, you're expecting it from the wrong person. Because they will tell you something. God never moves through the people you think he's going to move through. He always moves through somebody you never expect. That's why you, you should be always in expectation of God to move on your behalf. That's why he said, just wait on me. Don't worry about what other folks doing. Just keep still. Wait on me because guess what? In the, in the right time, in the right season, I'm going to what? I'm going to move. I wrote a guy a letter this morning when I was sitting down. This is Apostle Barry Stace. I want to take the time to thank you so much. For listening to this pre-recorded message, wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord, Psalms 27. Let us pray. Now, Father, we give you glory and praise. We thank you for your word. We bless, magnify, edify, and exalt you for the word. And Father, even as we enter your presence, we repent for our failure to be still, our failure to wait on you. We repent, Father, for our disobedience and for not obeying your voice when you said be still. Now, Father, we ask you right now to release that anointing to cause us to be still and to wait patiently on you. Release that anointing, Father, that gives us peace in our spirit. For you said, I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Release a refreshing in the anointing, a reassurance in your anointing, a confidence in your anointing, a measure and a level of faith activated in us, God, that we know that you are our alliance and our reassurance and we know that through faith all things are possible to him that believe for the word says without faith it is impossible 
to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So, Father, even as we repent now, we ask you to forgive us for our failure to wait patiently on you when you've spoken and told us to be still. But release that fire that shifts us, that anointing that shifts us. Give us those impartations that cause us to be still for your kingdom and for your glory's sake. Now, we bind Satan and every spirit of the enemy that would try to stop this word from being pierced in our spirits. But pierce our spirits, our soul, our minds, and our bodies, and give us a peace even as we be still and wait on you to move. We're waiting on answers from you, God. And assure us, Father, that even through this word, that you're speaking in our spirits and you're telling us now is not the time to move, but to be still and to wait until you release us. And for that, we give you glory because you love us enough, God, to keep us from making an error, to keep us from making a mistake, to keep us from moving in the wrong timing. But when it is the timing in the season, shift our spirits, prick our spirits, and cause us to move according to your will. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now we seal this prayer, every crevice, every crack, seed, root, and fruit, and we activate it even now in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now before I end this uh, voice recording, I do want to take the time to ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you saved? If you're not saved, this is your opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. St. John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It says, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So this is your opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Repeat after me, Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of my sins. I repent of my iniquities. I confess my ungodliness and unholiness and unrighteousness to you, Father. And according to your word, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, you said, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and if I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead for my sins and iniquities, I shall be saved. So, Father, I confess Jesus is your son. I confess that he died and rose for my sins and my iniquities. I believe in my heart that he is my Savior and that he's the Savior of the whole world. Now, Father, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you've just prayed that prayer, you've just accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing for one more soul that have entered in the kingdom of God Almighty. So I say to you now, get in the Bible, believe in church, and allow the word of the Lord to be poured in your spirit. Begin to seek God as never before in this hour and in this season. Now, this is Apostle Barry Spanks. I want to take the time to thank you so much for listening to this pre-recorded message. Wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. God bless you, you, and especially you. And until the next time, bye now.